Your mind is interesting. You know, people say, oh, my business plan, the way I'm going to grow my business is I'm going to work harder or I'm going to work more. And people have a tendency to not realize that there's a finite uh, resource in time and you can't grow your business by doubling your hours. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. You grow your business by leveraging your authority with other people. And you've done that with all of these organizations. Principally speaking, when somebody does that sort of thing, it has to really, there's a, there's like the forming of the person, like, you know, who are you that allows you to do that? And that ends up being kind of a deeper question. Like how does your faith impact the way you run your business? I mean, yeah, so, the way you see so, fairness, so, justice. You, you make me think of a lot of things when you talk, when you, when you say, when you have that this conversation, but I gotta tell you when, when I've had my toughest times, um, you know, I, I look to God and faith like mm. you never, like never before. Mm. And whether it be, you know, I had a battle with the unions in the Chicagoland area that really broke me back then. We, my wife and I, you know, did pretty well. We grew up a six million dollar business, making a you know million bucks a year. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the unions came knocking and said, "Now it's time to belong to us." And I, and I talked to my my teammates. And I said, "Guys, you guys, girls. I only had a couple of girls in my office. I said, you guys want to be part of this the union thing?" And they said. No, I said, well, this is America. I don't want it either. So we're going to fight them. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, that was a, that was a fight that cost me dearly financially, mm -hmm. but the lessons I learned from it were incredible and, and it made me stronger for the future. Mm -hmm. Um, so I lost everything, you know, my, my, we were worth five or 6 million bucks and it took us down to negative, you know, half a million or mm -hmm. so. Um, so it was a really, it, it was a tough time, but at, when I look back, the lessons I learned, um, got me to understand how to how to look above the forest, you know, to to, to be at that you know at fifty thousand foot uh, um, level instead of in the in the in the forest, figuring out where I'm going. Because I believe that I had to do kind of do everything. I was so good at, at paving. I had to be the on the, on the pavement. Yes. I was so good at grading these parking lots. I had to be the the, the person on the grader and yes. an excavator. Okay, you can't do everything as you said. So what did, what did this do? This union battle got me to get outside the business because I had to plan every day fighting the union how the heck we're going to get our jobs done because they were yeah they did some really really crazy things to us and uh, tried to stop us every way they could mm -hmm. and it's just it's a book someday. Um, mm -hmm. But either way, bottom line is uh, that was a lesson that that took me from that six million because I stayed at six million in revenues for the, the three years we fought them and really lost my butt, lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And anyway. So that the year after that we went to 20 million and then we went to 40 million and within, within, you know, seven years over 200 million revenues. Right. But mm -hmm. I would have never gotten there if they didn't teach me how to get out of the forest. Right. Yeah. Right. And pay attention to what's ahead. Yeah. And so I, you know, I got to thank him for that. Thank him yeah. for breaking me over that time. Yeah. How about that? And the then, unions made you rich. That's right. <laughs> and then the last lesson I told you earlier, and I, I think, you know, I, I prayed a lot more and, and stuff. And, and one of the major lessons I learned, my, my wife fought, fought um, uh, brain cancer for, for yeah. four years and four months. And uh, that was the toughest, uh, toughest time in my life because uh, losing the, the, the partner that was uh, my ama amazing person, most faith strong person. Mm -hmm. I, I was a person that believed in God before me meeting my wife at 19 years old. Mm -hmm. She was 18, I was 19, but I, 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 I believed in God, but I didn't understand mm -hmm. much about it. And I didn't understand why it was important, right? Yeah. She brought all that to me fast. She was a strong Catholic. She never varied her faith ever in her life. I mean, ever. Through, through the toughest times, she was just as strong. Through the, through the biggest... Uh, you know, disappointments for her. She was like a rock. Mm -hmm. Cancer. She's she she believed, um, and she knew that this was God's plan. And she said, uh, you know, I, I know why I got this. After she saw over a thousand people chiming in and praying for her, right through Caring Bridge and and all her social media and everything else, yeah. the foundation that we built that she built, serving other people and other causes. She saw all these people chiming in, all they're praying for her. And she said, I know I got this. She was a uh, uh, all these people are praying for me, many of which I know don't have a lot of faith in their lives. She goes, God's given me this to be a blessing to others. And look, look at all this, right? Yeah. And she mentioned relatives and family members that, you know, that state that they don't believe in God and they're praying like they never prayed before. Wow. So anyway, that, that, I, I believe, you know, that lesson in my life is the biggest lesson to know that, you know, um, that this, this is all a plan that, mm. that we have to do the best we can with that. And, and, um, for me, my, my legacy is going to be about, you know, teaching people to, to be entrepreneurs and to take advantage of this great American dream that we're part of. Right. Yeah. And then and then protecting it because we can talk about it all day long. Mm -hmm. But if this goofy president we have right now aligns with the, the communist and yeah. the next president is him or somebody like it won't be him. But uh, Michelle Obama or, 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 or some other idiot 
that doesn't believe in and doesn't have any faith in their life doesn't doesn't believe in anything but feeding their own pocketbook, right? Yeah, and thinks that communism is good for the, for them and the world, and yeah. and they're going to push it. So I did a I worry about this. I did a post once, <clears throat> and it was we just saw this recently because I was uh, in another business. I was just trying to measure um, some social media stuff with no effort at all. Like if you post this and you put it here, what happens? And my company didn't have any material to use to try to kind of figure these algorithms out. So they were like, Dave, just do like a two minute video on whatever, we'll post it. And one of them was, can a socialist be an entrepreneur? And I said, I started off, I said, well, I was, I was going to make this a 10 second video. It was going to take me about nine seconds to say, <laughs> ask the question, can a socialist be an entrepreneur? One second, no. And then I just shredded the whole idea. Obviously, you know, you and I could complete each other's sentences to do this. And I got, a, I went back, I looked at a ton of reactions to it. Shockingly, uh, saying this guy doesn't understand socialism or entrepreneurship. Clearly by Harvard students, they must yeah. have been, that don't know entrepreneurship or socialism at all, never talked to somebody from Argentina and have never built a business on their own. And yet they're, they're you know, lackeys for their professors. But that was one of those things where I, you know, we can talk here building a business with rational people around us doing great things. But the reality of the number of people who don't know what's going on or fighting against goodness is absolutely unbelievable. And they they're, they're, they seem like a cartoon, but they're actual people. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I, so I was in a couple of entrepreneurship boards. I was asked to be on. I won some entrepreneurial awards in Chicago and nationally and stuff. And so I was asked to be on these entrepreneurship boards. I was like, wait, I didn't go to college, man. I barely, I'm just, sure you want me. I, I'm, yeah, you haven't educated yourself. Yeah, 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 we want you, right? So sure enough, I was on these boards. I spoke in front of these students. And I only spoke a few times in each school before they didn't want me to me <laughs> because, because, all, because almost all the professors had no real world experience. No. Almost all of them believe that socialism is a good thing. They, and they're teaching entrepreneurship. You can't. And I, and I would bluntly tell them. You should not be teaching in front of you. Should not be teaching this class. No way. Somebody that built something should be. Yes. And so anyway, that was my. That was I. I wasn't very successful. It's like having the theory. I wasn't the most successful in. in, in yeah. In, in I this world. theorize as a teacher that this could fly for seventeen miles. Okay. Well, there, it can't. And there's no. There's literally nothing but your theory that says that. And now you have graduates believing this can fly for 17 miles with no experience at all, telling everybody else who actually understands the physics of flight that they're wrong. I mean, it's it's a, it's a fascinating thing. Hey there, Giant. Thanks for watching Durand On Demand. I need your help with something. The world desperately needs more Giants. You know it and I know it. We've been around a lot of people struggling, figuring out how to make things go. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with as many people as you can. We're going to build this audience and we're going to help people slay dragons together.